got a monster inside of me. You better watch out if you ignite him. He's a road ahead of full prophecy to be the greatest beast the world has ever seen. I feed him every day like the bones clean. I feed him All right, guys, all welcome to the Andy Elliott One Percenter Podcast. Today, I've got a real treat for you. This guy's a cool, kick-ass insurance company. Also, um, he has a mentorship program called the Adversity Kings, right? Yes. And I'm wearing a shirt. I thought it was kick-ass. It's like, dude, this thing looks good on me. It makes my arms look big. Yep. I think I'm going to rep this thing. No, but he's cool as shit, man. He's young. Um, he's crushing it. He's got a big social media. What's your social media in case I want to look you up? Windy City Tristan. Okay. Yes. Just Windy City Tristan. Yeah, just Windy City Tristan. Yeah, Windy City Tristan. He's almost at a million followers. He's, um, you know, it could be more now. I don't know. I'm not sure. But when I looked at it, uh, he gives a lot of great content. You know, he's always on fire. He's hungry. He loves sales. loves leadership. And he loves seeing people win. Um, I kind of want him today, number one, tell a little bit about what he's doing now. But, but really, let's start out with... You know, why Why is this mentorship program called Versity Kings? I, we yeah. know what adversity is, and obviously yes. no one's going to become great. I don't know any self-made badasses. I'm going to say self-made. That means your mom and dad didn't give you the money. Self-made badasses that made it without overcoming a lot of adversity. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's a cool name, and I understand it very well. Um, why don't you talk to us a little bit about adversity kings? Uh, uh, just let's let's rip. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you very much for having me on, Andy. Bet, so bro. adversity kings, I actually – I was telling you right before we started to rip, I, I came up with, uh, it started with the lion. The symbolism of the lion actually started with my dad. So there's a lot of adversity that transpired. Both my parents went away, but I always, I told my mom last night. What does that mean, went away? They they went to jail. So my mom, right. she hates when I say it, but it, it's our life. No, no, no. Hey, listen, you know what I mean? Listen, I got I know a lot of people right now Yeah. that are great people Yeah. that went to jail. We all screw up. Hey, everybody should go to jail, right, at yeah. some point in their life. They just didn't get caught. Yeah. Okay. Like, I stole a piece of candy when I was a kid. Yeah. I didn't get caught. Yeah. Like, okay. Like, I'm just telling you, like, there's a lot of people right now. Yes. That, like, I'm just saying, like, no, not knocking that, yeah, you know, like, thousand people percent. kill someone. Shit, they should go to jail. But a lot of people do shit that they could have gone to jail for. Yeah. A lot of people watching this are like, I can't believe that. Dude, you didn't get caught. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, we could go through your whole scope of your life. And so, like, you know, it's okay, dude. Yeah. Right, it's what happens when you go to jail and you get out. Absolutely, that that matters. But anyways, but keep going. So they they went away. They yeah. went to jail. Okay. Yeah. So so they went away. So my mom went away when I was like six or seven years old, and I remember I remember it because they actually split up right prior to her going away, and she was from Pennsylvania. And so we we go back to Pennsylvania. She comes home one day, got to go away. She goes away. My dad comes and takes me from school, and I go back to Arkansas. I was born and raised in Little Rock, Arkansas, and so that's where you kind of get that country vibe from. But I remember that that process of when she was going away because my dad started that's when the seeds really started to get planted. And I told her I told her last night I was in the hotel and all this traveling and all this investing I'm doing, it, it just had me a little anxious. Like I'm doing like really big moves right now. And I told her, I'm like, I'm gonna start sharing more of the good as well because I feel like you're just clipping out the life of where the adversity king started because I highlight the pain that evolved me into who I am today. Because that's what that's what that's what I that's what I recollect on when I grew like when I grew up. Is I think on all the pain with my my mom going away, my dad going away. But I was like, prior to that, they had me in a Montessori school. So I don't know if anybody watching this ever went to a Montessori mm -hmm. school, private schooling, things like that. I was on a private jet at six years old or something, maybe eight years old, um, because of the network my dad had access to. So it's like I was exposed to wealth and principles and values and church at a very young age, and then it was all stripped away. But there was a movie that my dad put me on amidst all of this chaos when my mom was away and it was called A Ghost in the Darkness. And it was about lions. And these lions just, just pretty much just like ransacked this whole village and this guy just had to go out and kill them all and everything like that. But my dad started to instill pretty much this, this regardless mindset of no matter what you go through in life, I don't care what it is, regardless, you're gonna get up and you're gonna go kill. You're not gonna show any emotion. You're gonna look whoever it is, whatever it is in the eye, positive, negative, and you're going to get the job done. I don't care if you have to die trying. And he started, like, indoctrinating me with that mindset. We watched 300. We watched Scarface. And I'm eight years old. You know what I mean? So a lot of parents might look at that and be like, I love it. You know what I mean? Your dad was, like, hey, you was know, abusive. I was 18 years old. I said, they said, you eat what you kill. Yeah. I'm like, what does that mean? They said, no sell, no make, no money. You yeah. eat what you kill. And I was like, okay. I mean, sell or die. Yes. Like, like, but my point is, is that. I love that, dude. I think masculinity is something that a lot of people are missing right now in this world. Yes. So your dad was teaching you masculinity that, like, you got to become a warrior. 
Hey guys, I would love to personally invite you to come train out with me. I'm gonna be coached by my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi, June 13th, 14th, and 15th, right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. All you have to do is have trained with me at least on a training course before. So if you're watching this, if you've purchased one of my training courses before, you qualify for this. By the way, it's free. It doesn't cost you any money. It's absolutely free. So what does that mean? That means if you're watching this and you've trained with me, I'm not gonna charge you anything. I want you to come train with me. I want you to come out to Scottsdale, Arizona. You're going to train with me while I get coached from my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi. It's going to be three days straight. This room is going to be filled with about 500 people that are raging fans of what the LA group stands for, is the core values, the standards, and winning and kicking ass. And if that's you, you're going to be with these like-minded people and you're going to be with me while I coach. I love you guys. It's something that I've never done before, but it's a private invite for those who have trained with me. So if you want to come to this, just text the number 918-210-02. Write it down. It's very simple. 918 210 0254. Shoot me a text. Say, hey, Andy, my name's John Watson. I did buy your training course, you know, a year ago. I would love to come train with you on these three days with you and your company while you're getting coached. I'd love to spend that time with you. If that's you, boom, we'll send you over an invitation. It's limited seating, only 450 to 500 people, and then we're cutting it off. Let's get back to the video thousand percent yeah. so he started to instill those things into me at a very young age and my sister as well it was like work first play later and everything you start you finish and it was he just always kept casting the vision of a lion a lion a lion and um it was a hybrid also between my my mom and my dad so my dad actually when i was 10 years old my mom's still away and um wake up one day this man has never cried in my entire life he's crying and I'm like, what's, what's the matter? He's like, I got to go away. And it's almost like replaying in my mind. And so he goes away. We meet up. They do a drop-off. My mom takes me and my sister uh, back to Pennsylvania. And I watched her. We lived with my grandparents. And for two, two three years, maybe, maybe even less than two years, she worked 24-7, basically, is what it felt like while we lived with my grandparents and saved up enough money for us to get our own apartment. And so what, what I – when I wrap all of this into Adversity Kings, I saw both my parents struggle. There was beauty, and then there was this pretty much my entire childhood of both parents gone in some way, shape, or form, struggle, but neither of them quit. My dad didn't quit. We didn't have a relationship for a long period of time. We're just now talking again, and uh, I, that's actually where I FaceTimed you. I was down there visiting him, mm -hmm. and um, neither of them quit on myself, on themselves, and I think that's really where the adversity kings, it started to solidify when I was 17 years old. I was a bad kid. I got kicked out of every school. I got officially expelled my sophomore year. I was running the streets. I was just doing stupid things. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I was a horrible salesman, but I was trying to be a, a street salesman. Yeah. And um, I just started preaching to myself just the adversity kings. You're an adversity king. You're an adversity king. And looking at my mom work two, three jobs, cry every night because of my my discontentment with where we were at in life. I thought we were living in poverty and I started talking to Ali and he's telling me about Africa and where he grew up and I was like, you disrespectful piece of shit. You know what I mean? That's that, like, these are the epiphanies I've had when I'm 21, 22, 23 years old. And I'm reflecting back on like all the times I told my mom, you know, we're growing up poor. I can't stand this. Like it was like, I was a hateful kid. I was hateful that she went away, he went away and all like we were so poor. Like how do we go from having access to everything to now we have nothing. And we were on food stamps, the food bank lines. And uh, she still find, she found a way, no matter what, to make ends meet. And so I started to, as I start hit 17, 18 years old, I almost started to almost hate myself for who I was in those teenage years of how mean I was to my mom. Almost to like, I drove myself to like an angry slash depression of like, dude, how did I treat my mother like this? And how have I hated myself and my family when they just did the best that they could? And so that's where Adversity King started to cement itself. And then I ran into somehow, I don't know who introduced it to me, but I ran into something called The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. Mm -hmm. And then I started to positively program my mind. And I think in the midst of that in church, deep prayer, deep worship. I served in the church. My, I was always like the prodigal son. I was in the church, out of the church. Mm -hmm. I'd be in the church and I'd want to go chase girls. And I'd be like, I'd feel conflicted in uh, so many different things. And all of those things are pretty much the components that created adversity kings yeah the uh the prodigal son everybody knows that yeah you know what i'm saying you got it all yes y y you take the inheritance you go away yeah and then you realize i'm gonna go back to dad and you know you're like he's not gonna accept me i'll just be a slave whatever yes. and then he's like you know slaughter the catty fatty calf get my best robe get the ring my son's home that's yeah. how god is when you come back 
And the crazy thing is, is that he never leaves us. We leave him. Yes. That's it. But he never leaves us. And that's why anytime you turn to God, I tell people, I'm like, you want peace? Just turn. He's right there. Yeah. Like it's that easy and people can do it now. And there are things in this earth, right? That you can do to also get your mind right to, to plug into. You said a couple of things. You said the secret. Yes. Right. Like everybody should write that down. The, there's a movie called the secret. Yeah. It's a Netflix documentaries and there's a book. Yes. And they're, they're, they're amazing. And everybody, like you were programmed a certain way growing up by the experiences you went through, the shit you saw, the relationships you had that were obviously taken away and then restarted. Yeah. And so you're programmed. So like when you're programmed that way, um, you just become hateful. Yeah. Dude, listen, when you fall in love with somebody and then they go away, you hate everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you fall in love and then you hate and then you fall in love and you hate. And all of a sudden you're like, dude, this ain't worth it no more. And then what happened, you, your reason why you're a bad person is because you thought everybody was going to hurt you. So hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And so instead of turning your, what you're doing now in life is that you've turned your wounds into your weapons. Yeah. And if you raised your shirt, you're all scarred up, but all the world is scarred up. Everybody has scars. Mm -hmm. You told your story. Every person watching this right now has some form of a story. And if they haven't, and they've had a perfect life, most of those people now they're struggling because they've had everything given to them yes. and their adversity is going to happen on their second half of life. Yes. So it's like, you know, we got ours out of the way early. Yeah. And now we're like, Hey, hold on. If you're out there, like we want to make sure that you don't put yourself in our shoes where we were at, 100%. you know, so you started a mentorship program, yes. right? Called the adversity Kings yes. and you coach men and women or yes. men, yeah, yeah, men and women, men and women. Uh -huh. yes. on, on just how to push through adversity on how to, how to reprogram your mind. Yes on how to push through, not give up, stay strong, you know, yes. operate your thoughts differently so your yes. life can have a different outcome. Intangible value as well. Sales changed my life. And everybody's in sales, you know what I mean? It's just some people choose to get compensated for it fully, you know? So I think a combination of the sales, the leadership, the life, and tangible skills, because I feel like this has been very reassuring. It's just getting around you and just behind the scenes, you're the same person off camera as the same person on camera. And so is your team. Everybody that I've gotten in contact with, we pull up, 30 people pull up outside, and it's just the, the Ali army, you know what I mean? The Elliot army, all these individuals, and it's like they're individually themselves, but it's also a representative group. And it's like, dude, that's, that's what I want, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so trying to emulate that is reassuring because if you're watching this right now, here's a big mistake that I've made. As a young, hungry man, I've realized – you can be really hungry, and a lot of people will be like, man, I'm so hungry, I'm going to be successful. Sometimes you can be so hungry and not have the right guidance, you'll do stupid shit. Oh, yeah. You'll stay stupid, stupid yeah. shit, and well, I've done that. Well, when I was younger, I wanted to make money, and success to me was making money yeah. because that's how we equate success. I was poor when I was young, mm -hmm. and I was like, dude, over my dead body, am I going to grow up poor? Yes. And so like, I found sales. So anybody watching this, like, clearly you guys know this. This is a sales channel. This is an opportunity for you to meet people who are in sales. He is in sales. He's also a great leader. Sales has given him a way out, a quality of life he wouldn't have had other than sales. You learn sales. Yeah. You say, dude, everybody has this like opportunity to be great, but most people don't get compensated for it. Mm -hmm. You can be a good person and work a salary job and you end up selling your dreams for a salary. Yeah. Dude, money's important. But it's not everything. Yes. And so when you have a leader that's telling you, you got to get money, you got to get money, you got to get money, that isn't the best way. No. Yeah, it's it's become great, become great at sales, become a great human being, be good to people, make sure you leave people better than when you met them, you know, pour your heart out in every conversation you have, you know, make sure that you use your mind every day because yeah. God gave us a great mind and most people don't use it. Uh, people wake up on a screen, they go to bed on a screen, they're living in a cloud. People aren't even thinking. Mm -hmm. They get their endorphins firing by their phone, not by winning or selling or helping someone. And I think now in your coaching program, you're giving to all these people and helping them. And literally, it's like giving you this feeling of being alive more yes. than any paycheck has given you. Yes. And so I'm going to say heaven on earth here. So imagine if you could have that, I love that. and make money. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's like, that's the Elliot group. Yeah. So when we created Elliot Army, I told my guys, I'm like, dude, we're going to work out. We're going to take good care of our families. We're going to inspire people to be great. And we're going to relentlessly push them, put us, push us. We're going to be the example. We're going to hold ourselves to the example. We're not going to be frauds. We're going to be close to God. 
we're going to like who we are. We're going to train. We're going to study. We're in self-development. We're, we're going to live in self-development. We're just going to do all these things, but we're going to create it almost to be like a ministry. And we decided that we're all a little bit different and we all have strengths and weaknesses, but together, I would say an individual can be beat, but a team can't be beat. Mm -hmm. As a team, we're unstoppable. Yes. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. As you're watching this video, my brother right here, he has an awesome mentorship coaching program. So if you're looking to get mentored, you wanna to go to the next level, you wanna recreate your life, you wanna change, this guy can definitely help you do it. He's got three tiers, different programs on how he coaches people. You see the number below, just shoot him a text message. Say, hey, I saw you on Andy's podcast. This is what I'm struggling with. And he'll personally reach out to you. He's amazing. And that's the reason why I have him with us because he's an awesome dude. Number two, he runs a kick-ass insurance company, okay? He's got over 100 guys on his team, men and women. They're blowing it up. It's virtual, right? Yep, you can virtual. work from anywhere in the United States. It's a, it's a killer opportunity. You can earn a lot of money. The, the financial insurance space has made more millionaires than any other industry. Okay, so to find out information about that or mentorship, make sure you text the number below. He'll help you guys. Let's get back to the video. And so that's why you see us travel in packs because we all watch each other's back. But more importantly, it's like for good. It's not for bad. Anytime you see, you see a pack of people, it's like, oh, that's trouble. Yeah. But like you see a pack of us, you're like, dude, you're going to get fucking pep talk to death. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like positively, like we're, we're in it for good. Yes. And so anyways, it's just, it, it's, it's, uh. Life, if you can't, and you've heard me say this, if you can't find it, build it. Yes. And that's where I think you're being around a, a bunch of influential people. You're building in your head what you want. And I see a lot of people, uh, their hearts have big holes in them. Mm -hmm. And they make money, but they don't like themselves. They, they have a relationship, but I see the way that their girl looks at them, and they're not happy. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if they got kids, they're disconnected. So, you know, we live our life differently. We travel with our kids everywhere we go. Um, we just live by a different set of rules. And I think right now, if anybody wants to learn how to really stand out, don't conform and, you know, don't be like society. Yeah. And if you do, um, there's this book, because you, you mentioned a good book, there's this book called Lynchpin. And it says that there's this revolution that's happening. And a radical change is like the definition of a revolution. And it says people that stand out and that are different and that are, can, make, can make relationships that others can't, they're going to own this next decade. So this is that time for you to make relationships with everyone that yeah. other people can't make and don't want to make. And then you got to stand out and you got to be different. And I'm going to tell you how to stand out. Give a fuck. Yeah. Actually care about people. Holy crap. People are like, oh my Some God, guy. this guy actually cares about me. Yeah. And then now all of a sudden, if you just do that over and over and over and over again, I always say the, the, the market rewards people for like who they really are. Yes. Dude, the market's going to freaking rain on you. And that's yeah. how it works. Um, but you have an insurance company, right? Yes. Like that's like you have your coaching and that's what you do. Yes. And you know, I mean, I'm sure it's profitable and you do good, but the biggest thing is, is that you just love people. Yes. So that's like your fulfillment because of the art of achievement and there's the art of fulfillment. Your fulfillment is coaching. Yeah. You love coaching. And the art of achievement is you have an insurance company. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, let's talk a little about your insurance company because I know there's a lot of people that watch our channel that look for great opportunities. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about that. How does that work? The insurance deal changed my life. So I got into ins insurance when I was 18 years old, and it was, re it was really by the grace of God. I was... I enrolled into college for two weeks, and I, this is this is a this will be the only intelligent thing I'll probably give you because I'm like a farm boy at heart. Is I started somehow I started to study. I was in the process of reading a lot, and I started to study. It was subsidized and unsubsidized loans, and I was like, oh god, no, I'm not I'm not gonna put myself into a significant amount of debt. I'm going to. I was enrolled into an HBCU in Arkansas. If you don't know what that is, that's an historically black college, and I you know I'm half black. I'm pulling up light skin with the, I had cornrows down to my shoulders, I'm 145 pounds, and I'm looking around, I'm like, oh, where's all like the other like light skins? And, uh, but um, it was it was a cool experience because we where I sit it down, at? it's in Little Rock, Arkansas, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. It was called Philander Smith. Mm -hmm. It's actually where my dad went. And um, so I, I go in there, working at his restaurant, and I literally was probably there for two weeks. And this was like the second or third time I tried to reconnect with my pops after he got out. And so, 
I'm in deep prayer though, and I'm in deep worship. Probably like every night I throw on worship music, whatever, and I'm like just praying and praying to God, like, dude, I don't want to be broke anymore. I want to be rich. I'm enrolled in this school, and I started sub- studying the subsidized on subsidized loans. Basically, it starts to accrue interest. One accrues interest immediately. One accrues interest whenever you leave school. And I'm going for like general, like just general business or something. And I'm like, the, everyone here looks poor. The professors look poor. Nobody looks happy. Nobody looks wealthy. And I'm like this isn't the life I want. This isn't like, God's just calling me to something else. And my dad had told me, we were kind of like in an argument, not seeing eye to eye. He's like, you know what you should look into? And I was like, what? He was like, you should look into life insurance, putting your money into life insurance because it's a tax sheltered investment. And I was like, okay. And a couple of days later, basically that just the relationship didn't work out. I withdraw, I call my mom up, you know, I'm like, I, I've got to come home to come home. And, um, I'm in the process of coming home. I'm talking to my uncle, my dad's brother, and he's like, I'm doing property and casualty insurance. You should look into getting an insurance license. I believe that was God planting seeds in my life, like divine appointment. Mm -hmm. And then so like, I didn't realize it then, but then two, three months later, I get an automated email from Indeed. And so it's a life insurance company an hour away from my, my house in Pennsylvania. That's crazy. I drive out there. Maserati's in the parking lot. I'm like, I'm not getting hired. I got the cornrows. I got a. The, I went and got a suit from like Gabriel Brothers. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's hmm. like a, it's like a Dollar Tree, like whatever you would call it. It's like a just yeah. a you know cheap suit. And um, I walk in, do my interview process. It looks like it looks like this vibe. Everybody's jacked. I'm 150 pounds. You know what I mean? Like so, like I'm like okay. You know what I mean? They're all 30, 40 years old. I'm 18 years old. Not getting hired. I sit down. They're like, all you need is a life insurance license and a good record. And I was a good record, like a clean background. You haven't mm-hmm. done anything too stupid yeah, yet. Yeah, no felonies. Exactly. So I didn't have any felonies. I called my grandma up, called my mom up. We round up 150 bucks to get my life insurance license. Mm-hmm. I enroll into the course at 11 a.m. I had it done by 4 a.m. I stayed up, locked myself. I'm not a studier. I didn't. Technically, I didn't graduate. My mom got my diploma for me. So academically, I stopped at eighth grade. Mm-hmm. But you would not be able to tell that because I've spent the last X amount of years reading. So I get the life insurance license. And then my first year, I made 114000 By 22, I put seven figures on a 1099. That's gross income. Mm-hmm. And um, I haven't put less than seven figures on since I was 22 years old. The pandemic hits. I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska. This is where life insurance blows up. Our company is able to completely work virtual in nine days. All my sales were door-to-door. I was a door-to-door slayer. Mm-hmm. My first year in the deal, I was the number one agent. Okay, mm-hmm. now that's not... In comparison to other companies, it's not like I was like no, it was no, number no. one agent out of my but agency. Where you were at, you were but where I was at, I was yeah. killing it. Yeah, you know what I mean? I made one hundred fourteen thousand. I remember my first deal. I call I'm in tears. I call my mom up. We're gonna change the world. I'm gonna take care of you and Aaliyah, my little sisters. And uh, the first paycheck I spent it on her. Mm-hmm. We went out and got her a MacBook. I made twenty one hundred, twenty five hundred dollars. Spent it all on her. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what I knew it was. It was gonna be a game changer. And then three years go by. COVID hits. I'm twenty one years old, running an office. I'm like. I remember it was, I think it was Matthew 6, and basically this verse says, um, essentially, like, if God takes care of the birds, the bees, the flowers, and the skies, everything's good, how much more does he care about you? So mm-hmm. COVID's happening, i got to take care of an office of 20 people, and I'm like, the whole world's about to fall apart, mm-hmm. and all these kids are depending on me, and I just kept repeating that verse to myself, and I'd go outside, I'd, I'd be like, oh, the birds are still singing, the grass is still green, the blue the sky's still blue, God loves us even more, so we're going to be cool. We go virtual company 10 X's I made three hundred forty five thousand dollars at 21 years old and we like started slaying we're selling you know over zoom we could sell anybody anytime any place anywhere you could make money from wherever mm-hmm. and that's life insurance has just changed my life passive income I give to my mom for my old accounts and uh, she lives off that you know it's able to remodel her house for her and it's just been incredible and and I've you know what this has been stupid because I've just talked about all the things I've done there's been so many lives that I've been able to help change Justin Masca, Rob Jackson, Brandon Gamagami, Nate Fromm, all my dogs in, in the business, and John Rent, like so many people that I've helped change, that have helped change me, like my mentor, Simon Arias, and Brody Evanson. Like, dude, life insurance, more importantly, has changed so many lives indirectly through so many people. Mm-hmm. And so many people. And honestly, you know, a lot of people you'll say, like, oh, you're not self made. Completely agree. You know, I think people don't realize, regardless of your beliefs, you're God made. You know what I mean? So I, I, I don't know what people believe in, whether you're watching this or not, mm-hmm. whether you believe. I know for me, I'm God made. And yeah, that's, that's what life fact. insurance has done for me and so many others. And and people right now, um, they can text you. Yeah, absolutely. They can join your insurance team. Yes. You literally, I mean, I think it's a hundred something bucks to get a license. Yeah. As long as you don't have a felony. Yeah. 
you're in. Yeah. And then you can sell in as many states as you want that you get licensed in. Yes. And then you just kick ass. Yeah, literally. You make money. And then eventually, when you start getting really good at it yes. and you're kicking ass, then you're like, I'm going to build a team under me. Yes. And now you're making your own money. Mm -hmm. You're getting overrides. Yeah. Because you have a team. Yep. And you just teach those people to kick ass like you're kicking ass. Literally. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918 210 0254. 918 210 0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. And it's so simple. It's very simple. You sell money. I always tell people because people, they, the reason people get stopped in sales, from my understanding, and you, you guys crush sales way better than I do. My understanding is people, they frame things wrong in life. Mm -hmm. Your framing is your limitation. And that's been the biggest setback I've seen for individuals because they'll look at the leads and they'll be like, I just have these leads. I'm like, no, you, what's a lead? And we'll break it down and I'll be genuine and passionate for a little bit. I'm like, what's a lead? It's a human being. Well, how many are you limited to? Because we're limited to the U.S. Well, I believe the last time I checked, it was about 330 million. You have 330 million leads and you're limited? Somebody like Ali will come over here from Africa and run it up. 330 million people. Well, insur life insurance, I mean, at the end of the day, I know there's a lot of different things you can sell, right? Yes. Like in, probably in your insurance yes. um, space. But, you know, life insurance, I mean, death's an uncontrollable. A thousand percent. Right? Like, so one of us could die here in 20 minutes. Yeah. Tomorrow. Or we could live for 20 more years. But at the end of the day, I've got some people that are relying on me, that count on me. Yes. And my income helps support those people. Yes. And that's just, it's just as simple. If I'm no longer here, yes. that income is no longer here. If there isn't something put in place on the worst day of their life, yeah. when they're financially burdened because I'm gone, and now I'm gone, and they're heartbroken, if they're not left with a tax-free check, those people are really in deep trouble. Yeah. So if you don't set up a life insurance policy, who's going to step in? I don't want to have to think about that when I'm gone. thousand percent. That's the reason why you sign on the dotted line. You make sure that's in place. And life insurance is a selfless act for people that you love. Yes. Selfless. Yes. It's not like going to the mall, buying shoes and being like, oh, these are so cool. Yeah. It's like, no, you're buying something that you never get to enjoy. Yeah. You just get to know that the people that you love are taken care of. And to me, that's better than, that, than those pair of shoes. Yes. And, you know, it's crazy, dude. I mean, and death's an uncontrollable. You don't ever know when it's going to happen. And you definitely want to get it when you're healthy. That's why I ask people. I'm like, dude, people are like, oh, I'm healthy. I don't need it. I'm like, that's exactly that's the time exactly. to get it. Yes. <laughs> because when you're unhealthy, you can't get it. Yes. So if you want it, you get it now. It's your, it's your money. That, it's not your money that buys the insurance. It's your age and your health that buys it. That's right. There's billionaires that can't get it. That's right. Yeah. And, dude, and, and anyways, I just know if I was to die that, you know, if I'm, I'm going to say 50% of the household income, you better have a very hefty uh, percentage of the, the life insurance. Yeah, especially if you're That's why it's easy this. to sell. So people yes. watching this, like really you don't even sell it, you educate people. Yeah. And you're reaching out to people that request information on life insurance, right? Yes. I mean, you can get people, right? Yeah. And, and share it with them. Everybody you know has the same deal we just talked about. Yeah. You know, um, everybody needs to be protected, but really, a lot of you can buy leads that people request yeah. information yeah. to people have people reach out to them about life insurance yes sir um but anyways on your team you coach people on your team how to be how to do well just like you did yeah. you learned it so even you can teach it faster than yes you know than what you learned at your first time which you did well and most of your sales team are they virtual or do they hit doors you know what we there's no limitation you if you want to like hit a door you want to be in office I will say right now in regard to my the structure of my business, we're really similar to you guys. We have an in in office culture. Mm -hmm. That's where eighty percent of our revenue is generated okay. is our in office. So you guys. have a team that yes. you see a lot. And they call out. So oh, it's good. not it's a zoom out office. So it's yeah. not like, oh, we're gonna go hit doors today. No, you're gonna come in the office and we're gonna bump music, we're gonna have a good time. Yeah, so if there's like a, a young lady watching this. Yes. She's twenty years old, she's like, I wanna get in sales, but you know, I'm not trying to Absolutely. you know, go knock people's doors and all that. Yes. It's a telephone. Yes. Right. And then yes. some of them, if they're not in office, which means they don't live around you or they don't relocate, yes. they can work virtually from literally their home. Right. We had people making money in Poland this past summer. I got a lot of Polish in Chicago. So shout out to Nico Patch. And we got a lot of Polish guys that yeah. just, they go over. You'll to find a way. If yes. they reach out you're going to find a way. You know yeah, what I mean? They'll stay up 3 a.m. and call. Yeah, you'll do it. Yeah. Um, that's awesome, man. Uh, okay. So let's talk about some things that you've done right in your life. Yes. That you would say, like, you know, one or two things that anybody watching this right now, 
that, you know, obviously you talked about, you know, you always say like work hard before you play. Yeah. Like you said, your dad taught you, make sure you work hard before you play. Yeah. I think a lot of people play and then they try to go to work. Yes. Right. So like you have a hard work ethic. So we've got that out of the way. Yeah. The secret, the law of manifestation. You said that like, you know, if you can see it, you, you can get it. Yes. And when you say it out loud, I'm going to get that. You're calling your shot. Yeah. You're going to go get it. There's some things that they can read in this book, but that you said you follow this. And it, it's a real, the law of manifestation yeah. drill, because if you don't believe it and you're like, oh, that's a bunch of crap. Yeah. Well, the fact that you believe it's a bunch of crap is why your life's crap. Yes. <laughs> so thousand percent. it's happening either way. A thousand percent. You just don't see the good side of the law of the secret. Yes. You're seeing the shit side of the secret. Yeah. Okay. Like you need to change your thoughts. Yeah. Um, and that will change your results. Um, what are some things tactically that you did? Maybe whenever you were, you know, at, you know, you got into life insurance, you said you were, you know, kind of in a shitty place. Um, that was a great thing for you. Did you have to cut off friends? Yeah. You know, like, let's talk about some decisions that you made that really helped you. You know, let's talk about like, did you cut off friends? Um, you know, did you move away? Did you go to a different place? Yes. Like, what are some things that you did when you recreated your life that you think were pivotal things for you? It's a great question. You know what I mean? And, and it's, there's so many little different things that I could just list off. The first one that immediately goes back to my mind is, is when I finally made that commitment that I'm not a super religious person, but I, I finally said, no matter what, I'm just going to talk to you every single day, God, like regardless of like where I'm at in life. And that was around like 17 or 18 years old. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter when you want to, I, I would advise it before dying. You know what I mean? But like making that commitment of like, man, I'm just going to go all in on God regard. Cause I like being a young man in school, I feel like talking about God a lot and everything like that. I feel like I got made fun of for that, you know, being in and out of church. Like when I was like too hardcore on church, people were like, Oh, you're a little church boy. You know what I mean? So well, like I'm making gonna that tell commitment. You this, dude, if you're going to ever get made fun of, getting made fun of for God's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'll roll with that. Absolutely. I'll be a fool for God. Yes. I'd hate to not be. Yeah. On the other side of that. Yeah. I would say that is the cornerstone of like the success of my life. Cause my sister, she told me probably six months ago and this has to, this corresponds exactly with what I've done. Right. Cause I was, I was like, I just move really fast and sometimes it'll like catch up and I'll be like anxious. Cause I'm like, I like to spend and invest in correspondence with where I'm going, not where, where I'm at. That's sure. something I've done right. And I was getting a little worried about it. And she's like, listen, look how far we've come. Don't worry about that. Fear is worship to the devil. Faith is worship to God. Mm -hmm. She said, who do you want to partner with today? Mm -hmm. She's 21 years old. My sister's a dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and so I was yeah, like, we need to hire her. Dude, it, she, so she, she, I got her, I put her on the payroll, but her only responsibility. Kidding. Yeah, no, but I love dude, she, she sold for a year, came to me one day. She's like, you know what? I don't want to sell anymore. I just want to cook. I was like, that's fine. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. I'm good. Whatever you want to do. I got a bit. Here's another thing I've done right is my number one goal in my life. But, is but to God's the foundation. God's of your the foundation. Life. Okay. I think everybody should that's understand that. Yes. And guess what? And if people want to make fun of you, that's cool. There'll yeah. be a day that they get a bad doctor's report or someone they love does. Yes. Who are they going to turn to? The preacher man straight to prayer i always tell people i'm yeah. like dude listen you're gonna wait i'd rather change now yeah you know when you know there's an opportunity yeah do why everything's good don't wait for something bad to happen yeah you know before you go there absolutely you know so that and then what else so i'd say god is number one number two is faith over fear when you when you choose fear you choose the devil when you choose faith you choose god so you got to figure out who do you want to partner with today you want to partner with your positivity or you want to partner with your negativity Number three is, you know, like you pointed out, you, you have to analyze and audit constantly the individuals that are in your circle. And there's, everyone has, and I'll, I'll make a lot of like, I don't know, like, I don't know, biblical references, but everyone has like a Judas in their circle. And if you don't know the Bible, that's someone that'll kiss you on the cheek, but they have bad intentions. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, it, I talk about it every day in our company. Dude, like, I'm like, I know one of you guys, yeah, dude. you know, and I don't, I love and I don't you. Like, I don't like to say that, but yeah. I know it's just a fact of life. Yes. Because people know what to do, but they do the opposite. Yes. And I've had it happen. I've been in insurance and, for and they're, and, they're, and everybody sells out. Not everybody. Yes. But most people will sell out at some point. Yes. And they'll hate themselves for it. Yes. But they just can't resist they it. They can't resist. Yep. So it's auditing your circle, I would say. And that, that, that for me is a lifelong lesson. It's constantly auditing. What is this person's intentions? And this is why, like, I get worried when I get around people that are like, don't read the 48 Laws of Power. Why? You know what I mean? What's, what's in there that you know that I shouldn't know? 
You know what I mean? Like, don't read these psychology books. Don't study manipulation. It's like, that's just like telling somebody not to get rich. You know what I mean? Yeah, because no, I, like, I study everybody. You know, if there's 48 laws of power, maybe three I don't agree with. Maybe 10 I don't care about. What if what if 30 I'm, I, are great for me? Yeah. Dude, listen, I study everybody. The world's your library. Yeah. You just study everything, and then you figure out, you know, what does this mean to me? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. What can I do with this? Yes. Dude, I read a, I read a book sometimes 300 pages long, and I get one page of information out of it, and it changes my whole life. Yes. Yeah, so, like, what if one law of power out of the 48 changes you? Yes. Like, you know, it does. people are so stupid, they're so dumb, and these are lazy people that yes. have put boundaries on you, and when they feel like you're getting outside those boundaries, they, they don't like it. So yes. they're like, don't do that. Next thing is mom and dad, regardless of the mistakes. Patrick David said this. He said, you start out, you idolize your parents, then you demonize, demonize. your parents, mm -hmm. then you humanize. I didn't realize that. Like, you don't realize you're demonizing until you really go into, like, in deep into your soul of, like, man, shut up and start talking about how beautiful and amazing your mother is, how awesome, like, all the nights she stayed up, all the early mornings, the football practices, the things she didn't have to do as a single mother. She never dated in the process of me from 10 to 18 years old. She mm. never dated. And like, th that's, that's a sacrifice. I, I'm a grown man now. That's crazy. As a, as a high school kid, I'm like, you better yeah. not bring no stupid yeah. man to this house. You know what I mean? But like, now I'm a grown man. I'm like, the sacrifices this woman made, I will die. There's what keeps me up at night and like makes me cry right now is like, I would die for that woman a thousand times over. And there's not enough life that I can live to express to her that I would give my soul and everything for her. And now even to the point of like, I look at my dad too, the fact that he could go do five, six years. And like, sometimes I'll be like worried about how am I going to come up with this bill? And how am I going to, you couldn't see his kids for five, six years. Yeah, that's right. That's crazy. Couldn't see me. He could have just ended it. You know what I mean? Like, how did you keep going? So the love and appreciation that I have for my parents, mm -hmm. it's biblical. If you don't love your parents, I don't care what they did. You don't have a bad, you have a bad relationship with your mom, your dad. They weren't in your life. Find a way to love them. They're a child of God. Yeah. Find a way to love them. They're just, here's what I look at my parents. They were a broken child that grew up. That's like, people are like, oh, dogs, that's pit bulls are bad. They just had a, they just had someone that was mean. Mm -hmm. And that person that was mean had someone that was mean. So now you can't put any blame on anybody. Because since the beginning of time, we've been corrupted. When Adam and Eve, you know, were yeah. in the garden and messed well, no, up. Well, nobody's perfect. No one's perfect. Yeah. And then when you run around with that hatred in your heart, all it makes you is a hateful person. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, like, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of end this on this. And I was telling you before this, is that caring about people, you got to love people to care yes. about them. And so, like, you got to have love. If you want to be successful in business, you can be a cold, savage killer and want to rip your competition throat, throat out. But you also got to be a loving person. Mm -hmm. You got to be a loving person. You can annihilate your competition by out carrying them. Yes. You don't have to be shady and shitty and be a, yeah. a, a rude person. And determining on who's your leader will determine how you operate. I mean, I, on the back of my shirt, or the one I had on before this, it has Dana White's quote. It says, bet against me. And it that. says, may God have mercy upon my enemies. It says, because I won't. Yes. You know, say it won't happen. You know, say it, you know, you don't believe it's going to work for me. He's like, I love it. I love every second of it. Yeah. And I love people to bet against me. Um, I always say I'm a poor man with money. Yeah. Because, like, no matter how well I do, I still feel poor. Yeah. I still feel very broke. I have this chip on my shoulder. And to me, like, I don't ever want to lose that mm -hmm. because I see people and they finally make it. And then when you make it and you got a guy like me that never feels like he makes it, I'm going to run you over. Yeah. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to take all your customers. Yeah. And I'm not going to do it like in a bad way. I've just out competed you. Yeah. You got to be a psycho competitor. And this is an environment and this is a time. This is a great way for us to end this is that if you've ever wanted to be a badass, you know, a killer, a psycho competitor, whatever you want to call it. If you've ever wanted to grow, get your best life, make a lot of money, be fulfilled, have the art of achievement, be around great people. Now's the time to wake up. Yeah. Like now's the time. So you guys make sure if you're watching this, make sure you guys text him. Yes. Okay. Um, you guys can mentor with him. You guys can also join his team. Yes. Um, but whatever it is, um, you know, you guys can message him on Instagram, but you guys can text him directly, which me, that's just a simple text. Boom, boom, boom. 
and uh, they can connect with you, and then you guys can take it from there. Yes, sir. I know your mentorship program is kick-ass. Um, I know that you do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. I like being around winners. This guy is coming up. He's blowing up in the space. I was giving him some advice before this. I said, man, we're just in an era where there's a lot of frauds around the world. Yeah. You know, um, I wasn't happy with who I used to be, so I changed. Um, you know, we all fuck up. Yeah. You know, um, you weren't really happy with who you used to be. You changed. Um, we all mess up. When you're around people that have overcame problems and, you know, you talk about um, adversity, right? Adversity yeah. kings, overcome adversity. Those are people who are immensely qualified to help people to overcome adversity. Yeah, yeah whatever you have overcame, you can teach someone else to overcome it. Whatever you've gotten through, you can be a coach to help anyone else to get through that. I refuse to let someone coach me who, haven't, who hasn't been through some shit. Yeah. How in the hell are you going to help me? When my life has lots of problems and you ain't never had a problem. Amen. No ways. I'm out. Amen. So that's why I love these people that have been broken. They've got scars all over them, but now they're kicking ass. And that way they can help me get to where I want to go really quick as a broken person who wants to kick ass. Amen. Which 95% of the world's broken. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? So anyways, unless they have lots of ego and they're like, no, nah, I'm good, dude. Yeah. All right, we'll let you run that way for a while, but I'm going to go spend time with the people who are coachable and who yeah. have no ego and who want to, you know, be a better person and a good example for the world. Yes, sir. So you're doing a great job. How old are you again? 25. Yeah, 25 years old, guys. Make sure you go follow him on Instagram. Tristan, what is it again? Windy City Tristan. Windy City Tristan. Make yeah. sure you go follow him on Instagram, number one. Number two, shoot him a DM. You can text him. And, brother, I look forward to staying close to you. I know you're going to be back with us at yes, the Patrick Bet David event. Yeah. That shit's going to be crazy, It'll bro. It'll be crazy. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Yes, sir. Um, so, guys, get your coaching in. You know what I'm saying? If you want some additional help, reach out to Tristan. He'd love to help you. If you're looking for a great opportunity, you want to earn some good money, make sure you reach out to Tristan. He'll get you set up. Most importantly, let's just keep killing it. And every time we see each other, let's get Amen. more jacked. Yes, sir. Let's get more ripped. Yes. Let's make more money. Let's keep helping more people. And uh, let's take over the world, man. Let's Appreciate go. you, brother. Appreciate see you guys it. soon. Let's get it. Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.